All right, so we're gonna, we're gonna get going here. Uh, we have uh, Rod Evans uh, as a guest, an honored guest today. Thank you, Rod, okay. for being here. Uh, this is the the next episode of Dude, Where's My Flashlight? Uh, <laughs> that everyone chuckles because you know how many times we've been out in the middle of the night and we've got ten different flashlights that all look and I, yeah, they're hidden under your bag and you're you know so anyway it's kind of a running thing and. I wanted yeah. to do that. Um, so, so Rod, thank you for being here. You've inspired me, uh, unbelief among other people. Um, one of the things that uh, I just love about your work is that it's so diverse and so creative. And uh, the DIY projects uh, that you've put out yeah. on YouTube, the tutorials, uh, the mission behind this podcast is to not only bring artists to light and show a little bit behind the curtain of their personal life, but also yeah. to make light painting and art and creativity accessible to everyone yeah. because it brings happiness and there's no one that brings better happiness than you. Uh, so Rod, for being a, just a big kid, I want to, I want to, I want to start with the trip to the school where you had the 361 and you did the rocket swing. Uh, to walk me through uh, that, walk me through that day and how important it is for us to reach the youth. That was a, the school camp. So um, I, I, I work in two schools, and they're really small schools, that are each about 30 kids. Um, so I do light painting uh, at both schools, but I also do, do the 360 camera. I just want to in, in get all the kids uh, doing photography in all, all different uh, ways and formats. So um, that was a school camp I went on. Uh, I took my 360 camera, and it was a big, it was a big ad adventure place. And I got on a on a massive super duper swing, and then got my 360 camera and filmed filmed myself going on it. So, and the kids love that. I mean. Seeing me, seeing the teacher do that is just fantastic, and it inspires them to, to have fun and get out and do crazy stuff. But uh, just yesterday, I did all day light painting with my students. It blacked out all the windows of one of the classrooms, and we're in there for six hours just light painting all day. That's it's fantastic. Yeah. And so, are you technically an art teacher? Like, what what are you teaching? What's what's? I'm teaching primary. I'm not sure what you call primary okay. school in uh, in America, but um, it's basically kindergarten to year six. So, yeah. Five years, uh, five years of age up to you know twelve, thirteen. Okay. Um, uh, and in the small schools, I'm teaching you know kindergarten. I'm teaching all ages. So. And, and yesterday, I had I had the young five year olds and I had the thirteen year olds. I had everyone. So it was great. It was great. Uh, it's yes. great. I, and as a primary school teacher, I'm just a general teacher. I teach all subjects. I'm teaching science, geography, history, art, dance, drama. I love stuff. it. I yeah. love it. I love it. Yeah. Um, and. <laughs> And obviously, you're you're well, very well traveled. I didn't know if you know this, but I've actually spent some time in Byron Bay. I've spent some time in Byron. I've been to Oz. I've got three uh, Australian stamps in my passport. Um, yeah, right. Have, yeah. So where was the last time here? Uh, I was back there in 2010. So I went three times yeah. before that. Um, I just got back on a nine-month Central and South America tour for light painting. Um, yeah. I haven't made it quite over to Oz. And so is I, I know Dennis and, and those guys. Is there a big Australian light painting community? And, and do you connect with them? And how can we – yeah, how can no, we connect? Not really, no. I, I mean, I, I, online and stuff, I connect with people, but I haven't actually caught up with any – oh, there's a, a lady called Caroline Fisher in Byron Bay. Um, she kind of got me into light painting and spinning spill wool to start with. Yeah, um, and, and she she kind of introduced me to it, and then I just started following people online, and got so much inspiration from, you know, especially a lot of Americans, people in Europe, um, some people in uh, in Brisbane, Australia. Stephen Knight, the guy that does all the flashlight um, reviews, uh, he's great. So, but I haven't actually physically met up with anyone else, uh, pretty much in Australia. So I'm just on my own here. I've, I live on a property. Um, I've got paddocks all around me, and, and dark skies, and, and Milky Way, and I just kind of like. I'm, I'm in my element here and I, I enjoy my own time. I love being by myself. Um, so I don't really feel the need to go out and collaborate with other people. But when I do, I love it because I, especially with the kids at school, I love seeing the, uh, the kids, the ideas that the kids come up with, they just blow my mind. So they're using my tools, which you can see behind me. I love it. Um, but they, um, I kind of direct them on how to use the tools, but then I just let them go and they just come up with some stuff that I've never even seen before. And they use the tools in different ways that, I'm, that just blows my mind. And I, I think that's fantastic. So honestly, I, I work more with kids than I do with um, adults, but I'd love to get out and experiment more. Yeah. And collaborate more with adults, yeah. 
what what kind of differences do you see from the five year olds and the thirteen year olds? Do you see more structure? Do you see more thought and like um, planning almost in in yeah, some of? Definitely. Yeah, yeah. So there's a one boy yesterday. I think he's 11. He wanted to try different things all the time. And honestly, I've only had, I take groups with four kids, five kids at a time. Um, and they've, I've only got like 20 minutes with each group. So he, he just wanted to stay there all day. He was just so yes. into it. Um, yeah, it's brilliant. So yeah, yeah, pretty cool. I love it. I love it. And have you always lived in New South Wales? Have you always been in this area? Have you? Um, I grew up about four hours south of here inland at a place called Armidale. So I lived up there till I was in early 20s. And then I moved up to Brisbane for 15 years and I've um, been in this area around Byron for about five years now. Okay. Uh, yeah, yeah I'm, I'm, I'm about 40, 42 years old, so. Yeah, yeah. likewise, yeah, I'm 41. Uh, yeah, so I spent cool. some time in Byron, I went to the arts factory on my on my tour and yeah. I actually, I built, I built a ditch, I built my own ditch from scratch. I went out there, got the eucalyptus, hauled out from termites, right. I, I shaved it down, there's blood on my hands from just like working okay. so much. And uh, yeah, that? 10 years ago, I still have the dig. It's yeah. heavy. It's hard to travel with. Um, but I love playing it. I love the meditation it brings. Um, I love music as a therapy just in general. Um, and what go. better way to connect your mind and body and earth than yeah, a dig exactly. do, you know? Yeah. So yeah. Do, you, do you ever, have you been to the Arts Factory? Have you ever, do you play the yeah, dig? That's, uh, that's it's now that, oh, yeah, I went there like back in the early 90s for a gig. And um. But now it's called the Byron Bay Brewery. It's, it's changed. It's been bought bought out by a, a, a beer company. But it's still this still the same kind of layout, but they still have lots of gigs there in the outside big tree, underneath the big tree outside. And so it's, it's a great spot. Have yeah. you heard of a guy named Cockatoo Paul? He was no. hanging Okay, yeah, he's a Australian acoustic folk singer. He's got these cockatoo feathers in his hair and it's pretty rad. Uh, oh no, it's yeah, it's yeah, he's got a couple albums he cut there anyway. But uh, I noticed a few. I noticed a few um, travel spots. You've actually been. You're well traveled yourself. Uh, yeah. What's what, what do you find as far as what place can you draw back on that was the most inspiring? Like the the most like you just felt creative there. Uh, overseas, you mean, or for you mean for for photography? Just anything. Yeah, just because, you know, I want this podcast to be about creativity. And you you exude this in music and teaching and photos yeah. and light painting. I mean, like, and building, and building things. Like, what? Yeah, exactly. What, what I, think, I, think for, I think for a place for, for inspiration, especially around here, I love it. That's why it's, it's this paradise around here. I live, uh, I'm not sure about Portland, but I live about two or three kilometers from about, from a two, two waterfalls, two massive waterfalls. And then it's just, it's this paradise around here. I love it. I love driving to work every day. I love drive. I drive for half an hour to, to school every day, and I'm I'm driving out over the rolling hill, green hills, and I just look out and I go, and I just thank my lucky stars that I'm that I live here. Um, but that, around here, the east coast of Australia, as you, you as you know, is beautiful. Like the you know, the hills are right near the ocean, and with beautiful white uh, white um, sand beaches. Um, but I went to Tasmania a couple of years ago, and that did you have you been to Tassie? I have not. It, I, it escaped me every time. I was going to sail uh, around it because I think that's a yeah. really cool trip. I think it's like a three or four day trip. You can sail around it. Um, I didn't get to do that. Yeah, yeah right. So that, that place is such a small place and everything is condensed and it's it's kind of like it's beautiful uh, east coast and then the really rugged west coast. It's very very similar to the south coast of uh, South Island of New Zealand, actually. Tasmania, but um, just a really con condensed place, which uh, that reminds me of Yosemite National Park. I spent um, six months traveling, driving around America in 2011, and Yosemite was the bomb. It was just a, like, a, as I said, a condensed place, everything in a, in a small little valley. Just the most amazing place on earth, I think. That that's yeah, it just blew me away. And it's um, funny for us, I'm on an American tour now, and I didn't get a chance to go to Yosemite, but after Burning Man, which is in a couple of weeks, it's a big festival yeah. we have here. Uh, I'm gonna make my way up to there and and, and check it yeah. out. Have you been to Burning Man before? This will be my tenth year. Uh, this will oh, be my right, yeah. yeah, and actually, it's funny. Last year, I went, yeah, I went there as well in, in 2011. Um, that's I was there for three days. It was just amazing. Like that place. It, it, in daytime, it's fine, but when when the night time, when the, when it gets dark and all the lights come up and all the lasers and the color and just the sounds and oh, it's a brilliant place. 
it, so cool. it honestly actually started my light painting. Um, I used to dance with the fiber optic whips. You see some people yeah. paint the whips and the fiber yeah. optic. And so I actually yeah. was dancing with them around my body. And yeah. somehow somebody took a picture of me uh, on a long exposure, two or three seconds, which is about the right time uh, to move yeah. them. Uh, and it just worked. And I'm like, wow, if that's if that's what that looks like, what else can we do with these things? And then I was opening yeah. up you know, I was opening up portals and all kinds of stuff. And then I was oh. hooked, you know, from the day one, I was hooked. I was just like, yeah, okay, awesome. yeah, this is my new thing. I quit my real job. I'm a full-time artist now, just a full-time light painter. So it's been, it's been yeah, a world. Right. Yeah, it's been pretty cool, but uh, awesome. you know, making more creative uh, things and bringing us together and other people together is, is really where I think uh, is where my heart finds. Um, yeah. Now let's talk about, let's talk about the, the dark sky these Milky Way shots, beautiful galaxies that you're giving us here. Oh, nice. so tasty. Yeah, I moved down to Brisbane. It's in Brisbane, it's a city, you know, normal city. You can't see the stars. Um, but when I moved down here, I, I think I had my DSLR camera. It's just a cheap Canon. Um, and I, I've always wanted to take a photo of the Milky Way. So I drove out to a place called Nimbin, um, north of, north of <laughs> here. Yeah, you know Nimbin. I uh, drove up there and I noticed the Milky Way uh, outside my window and uh, so I pulled, I pulled the car over and it, and it was just a cow paddock, set the camera up and just played around with the settings and I, was my, I took my first uh, Milky Way shot and it was I was just blown away. So that was like four years ago. Yeah. Um, from then on, um, so, oh, then I was living in town and I was I was having, having to travel out, out into the paddocks and drive, drive a fair way to find a dark sky. And then um, two and a half years ago, I found this place where I live now um, was advertised uh, there was a room for rent so I moved out here I've been here for two and a half years now and then I just look, when I first moved out here I looked at the backyard and the Milky Way was rising in my backyard like it's from my back veranda I was like oh my god this is amazing so most of my Milky Way shots come from my own backyard in my front yard at the moment so I'm so lucky to live here it's, just, it's amazing and it's all dark skies and it's it's brilliant it's yeah. awesome you got the pool right there you got the <laughs> pool, the pool. You're, you're, you're incorporating <laughs> Oh my God, it's amazing. You've got reflections, you've got dark skies, you've got pool uh -huh. toys. I mean, yeah. dude, you've got, a, you've got an empty picture frame, which I, I used the empty picture frame about a year and a half ago on one of my light paintings where I actually was stepping through it and doing a self-portrait of a light painting, um, which I can, I'll put up in the, in the, in the conversation. Yeah. But uh, cool. yeah, I love, I love just thinking outside the box, right? And yeah. then, you know, I mean, and honestly, like, every single guest that's come on here has been inspiring me to always think different. You know, it's like, I don't want to get caught up in the, in the little heart likes on Instagram and not worry about judging my art on what others think. Yeah. But it's, it's, it's funny that if I think opposite or if like, Hey, I really wish this account would feature my, my, my I'm trying to get this account to feature me or I'd like to get more recognition. Yeah. I actually yeah. look through the feed and I actually think about, what hasn't been done? What what looking yeah. to this feed? What do they want? Because they want yeah, yeah. to go diverse thing. And that's what I actually tend to start thinking about and planning. Um, and I see that a lot in your work too. It's just like, dude, there's like tunnels and Milky Ways and pools and then yeah. you know, everything. Yeah. It's just yeah, it's just so awesome, man. You know, thanks, thanks Thank for you. doing you. Or right? you know, it's like and it's yeah. like so, you know what? I, I love I love laying down at bed at night. That's, and just just before I shut my or as I'm shutting my eyes, going to sleep, I, that's my time when I think of it. Ideas. Just bed and it's fresh in the morning, and then I can uh, yeah, get back to it. But I've got so many ideas. I mean, a lot, a lot of light painters. I'm not sure about you, but I've got a book full of ideas because ideas come and go, and they're like it's just too hard to remember them. When you're when you're out, out uh, on location, it's really hard to um to recall some of those ideas. Um, but it's, you know, having a little book of ideas, uh, all yeah, all your ideas written down, it really helps. Yeah, all, yeah. you know, as as a fellow artist, and uh, I'm hoping to start a YouTube channel myself. Do you have any tips for mm -hmm. me and all the rest of us on how to start a YouTube channel? Um, are there any tips and tricks that you have gone through that you're like, look, if I would have started really? over? My, my YouTube, I realize I've got that's 1,700 1, subscribers. And for me, I never even knew that. One of my um, school students told me that a few months ago. They said, oh, Mr. Mr. Evans, you've got so many, you know, that, that many subscribers. I was like, oh, I didn't even know that. So, because YouTube isn't, isn't a, big, big, a big platform that I follow. Um, I've had that account for 10 years and it's kind of, there's so many random videos on there. So yeah. I've just recently been uploading all the, uh, the light painting tutorials. 
So it's not something that I check regularly. Um, every I, I might post one of those videos up on Reddit sometimes. That's another thing. Reddit uh, has been a huge thing for me. That gives me a lot of um, a lot of followers on Instagram because I <clears throat> and I get a, usually post an Im image up there. I think I've hit the front page on Reddit three to <clears throat> three times now. And, um, that's that gives me a lot of inspiration from I get give I get inspiration to a lot of people from that. Um, they love it and. You know, I love giving, telling people how I do it, and giving a bit of bit of background and context to what I do, because there's a lot of light painters out in the world, especially that post on Instagram and Facebook, that don't give up their secrets, which is fine. That's fair enough. Um, makes it makes my brain tick to try and figure out how they do it, but I love it when people give me give, tell me how they've done it, because it's 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 sharing, it's caring, it's it's spreading the love. Um, yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's all those things, you know, and, and that's exactly what this podcast is about. You know, I want this to be an educational, I want this to be a fun thing, I want this to be an informative thing as far as getting to know you as a, as a person, you know, and yeah. making it accessible because yeah. I, I also agree with you that if you look at any of my posts, I, I say all the camera settings, I say exactly yeah. what I used, I say who inspired me, I make sure I yeah. credit every single person. If there's something that I didn't actually... 100% mentally think about and come up on my own. Yeah. Definitely giving credit out there. I think that's yeah. I think that's the direction we need to go as a community of light painters because it was there before I started yeah. talking to some of these other guys like Chris Bauer and Dan Chick and some of these older yeah. guys that have been in the game for a while. They're just like, hey, we used to talk like that and we used to yeah. post like that. And now it seems to be that everyone's not necessarily, it, they're coveting this information where I'm just the opposite saying, Let's teach people how to build their choice or their, their choice for cheap yeah. because then more people can do it, right? The more people yeah. we have creating art, the happier they are, the happier the world oh, is, the better we are, right? Yeah, so exactly. yeah, yeah, yeah. With you, I love the fact that your education like that. Um, I, I just I just I love it so much. Let's 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 migrate into the DIY tools. I see Frank's double-headed dragon, which by the way, it was awesome name. You came up with this. Uh, yeah, yeah, he called it the double. Uh, the over under or the double um I don't know, he had some other names on it said no I was gonna call it the double dragon so and he's he likes it so it's good. He does um, yeah. It's so, a great great tool man. Have you have you got any of his other devices? Other I, I, have, I have mine here and this oh, is yeah. this is the L E uh deluxe version. I think you might oh. have uh it's a little bit different. I got two switches. Um yeah. and so yeah it's got a full yeah. color spectrum of course the same remote um, yeah. I definitely, I, I, this, this flashlight to me has been an absolute game changer. I used to have yeah. one, but it never did what this could do as easy as it could do. And yeah. now I'm adding color, I'm adding backlight, I'm painting the models in the spray yeah. paint kind of fashion, almost like a street graffiti. And if you're, yeah. close, if you're close to the subject, you're going to get a finer line, just like you'd yeah. write on the ground. If you're back a little bit, you're going to get a wider spray. Um, you know, the multi-colors in here have just been awesome. Um, I can't yeah. wait to see a full review on this. I can't wait to see your full review on this. I wanted to give <laughs> a shout out because he is a DIY master, you know. He's know. a DIY master. Yeah. Basically, yeah. I'll just do a quick little intro, intro on this, how this works. Yeah. So if I flick that switch, uh, this side here is controlled by these buttons. Can you see that? Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and then... Also, can close that side as well. This side over here is completely controlled by a Bluetooth app on my. Uh, I won't do it now because it takes a while to set up. But um, and then that that, that switch there. Amazing. That side. Amazing. Yeah, so, just such a versatile tool, and I love it. So, huge thanks to Frank for building that building that Agreed. for me. Uh, I'm the first person in the world to have this have the double headed one. So. And other tools here. We go. So I was going to show you these adapters. Yeah. I'm not sure I didn't get these in America. It's a, it's a drain hose coupling for uh, washing machines, I think, because I don't have any light. I've never had a universal connector. I've never bought one because uh, no, no offense to Jason Page or anyone, but I just think they're too expensive. Um, exactly. Yeah. I mean, I. Th I never owned one for three or four dollars from my local shop. Uh, local hardware store, and then I just buy the. Um, sorry about the. Uh, so these these uh, butterfly hose clamps. Yeah. You know, slip it over the end, and then here's one on the torch here. 
Um, and then I can, you know, put a fiber optic brush or a, a uh, light flute thing, homemade light flute that I made. Just stick it on the end. What do you cut in the holes out in the PVC with? Can we? Can you that, so I basically just drilled drill holes in, and on this side I've done the same. I've drilled the same holes. Dremel the slots between the holes. So okay. yeah, pretty simple tool. But, yeah, I got I got the idea. Big shout out to Dennis Smith for that. I got the idea from him, and um, just wanted to make my own. So yeah, brilliant. So that's how it slots in there. Just tighten that up, and then I think with the universal adapter, you have to hold onto it really tight. You do. I think this is this is a better idea for me, but no effect. Oh, oh, I still think the universal adapter is probably a good good tool for, but not for what I do. I'd I'd have to put clamps on it, I think, because I've I've yeah flat my my tools around quite hard, especially the fiber optic brush. Yesterday yeah. I gave, gave it a beating, just flapping about behind the kids at school. So um. And the kids flog it as well. So. <laughs> uh, yeah, that black fiber optic or any fiber optic, uh, it just really throws a nice spread mm -hmm. of ink into the frame um, yeah. in a mist kind of ethereal, magical kind of uh, way. Exactly. Can, you've yeah. got like, keep going. What's yeah? What's next oh, on that? Well, say so that's the black fiber optic brush. But yeah. then I bought that first, and then I just thought I'm just going to make my own one for out of the a white fiber optic brush. So basically, I bought. One of, uh, one of those little, you know, those little lamps that go next to your bed or whatever, and this thing was yeah. spinning around on top, so I've disconnected that part, and then just put it into a bottle cap on top. There's silicon, black, put black silicon around it. The awesome. Silicon, yeah, so that's just my homemade job for that. And what's um, the diameter on that rod? What's the? What, does that fit uh, any flashlight? What's? Um, it's a little bit bigger. Okay. And you and have the threads. What do you Straight into there. Okay. Put a, and put a hose tape on it. Yeah. yeah. Perfect. Yeah. This is um, a cool. what's, Ah. The two foot long drinking straws. Oh, hey. That's awesome. I got <laughs> is that what you just say? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah cool. Yeah, good. Where did you get your straws? Uh, I just... Them? You know what? This was definitely not my idea. I don't know who did this. I don't know if it was you or somebody else in, uh, over there, I think, actually. I got mine from a novelty shop. Or, or, or yeah, I'm a, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, right. Cool. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, yeah, I found these on a couple of years ago and then just glued them into the into the adapter here. Amazing. Yeah, I haven't glued mine in because I'd like to keep the configurations of the different colors. I like to keep them kind of, um, I don't know, just random. Um, how tight? So, so mine are not glued. So, Rod, exactly. when you them tight, do they stay pretty good? Because if you see my video right here, they're pretty wide, and I'd like to keep them a little bit tighter. So, I could either clamp them up here to keep it one long, multicolored rod, if you will. Um, yeah. What do you think? A lot of mine, are, the, so mine are glued in, but mine, a lot of mine are bent here. So, when they fl they do flap about, they kind of go that, that way, um, yes. which is annoying. Moment. So yeah, you're right. I, I probably I could put a, just a rubber band around there to secure it. But yeah. um, you, when, when I glued them in, I'm sure that they can a, 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 a wide kind of color spectrum across them all. But um, this thing, the reason I glued them in because I did a lot of st shots down on the beach on a rocky outcrop along on the beach when it was a really windy night, and I was they weren't glued in. And I was flapping it about. There you go. See that one. Just, that's what yeah. I yeah, it just does that. So I need, probably need to redo these. I'll put a rubber band around there. But yeah, I was flapping about one night, and um, all the ones on the inside just fell out, and they just blew away. And I was like, oh no. So um, I glued them in, so it's not going to happen anymore. But yeah, I've got to secure it somehow because they keep getting bent. But otherwise, it's still a great tool. It creates awesome orbs, like it's like a burning sun, hot burning yeah. sun or something. With the rays Amazing. shooting out of it. Exactly. Yeah, love it. Exactly. Yeah. Love it. Brilliant. Yeah, I don't do a lot of orbs. I should. I got kind of away from it when I started just doing heavily on portraits. Um, but you know, what's to stop putting an orb around some yeah. human? Exactly. That's good. Exactly. Yeah. yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, what else have I got? Uh, plexi blades. So I just cut my own plexi blades. Just went to the hardware store and bought a um, massive big sheet of plexi, and then just got a, a jigsaw and cut out my own shapes. So basically, it's just. So, 
the kind of coupling. So this is basically just a washing machine hose adapter as well. Um, so basically I'll fill that, cut the blade, slot it into there, and then fill the gaps with black silicon down the side of the blade there. Yeah. You can see that? Yep. Put put some zip ties around there just to hold the blade in, and then there you go. Yeah. So I, it's just, this is a it's funny that you said this. I was going to ask you if you actually cut your own plexi. I've wanted to do it. I haven't done it yet. I'm not no. I'm not uh, like many people aren't as crafty or as hand handy as you are. Is it yeah. is it tough to run a jigsaw? Do you need like a table saw? Will the plexi split? Like tell me like how. Is um, this Honestly, I don't know. I, I used my flat, my, my housemate's a jigsaw, and I just went through his little kit, his blade kits, and I just picked out the finest blade, like the one with the, the smallest teeth. Okay. And it just seemed quite fine on it. And I'm. I, yeah, it cuts perfectly. No, yeah. Not, not, do, you uh, sand, do you sand your edges to make them more opaque? Do you sand I do them? on some of them, yeah. And I've cut out, you know, this. Yeah. That one's awesome. Yeah. So. Um, and the longer one. So I wanted to be able to do orbs with a plexi blade. So basically, what I wanted to do a really, really long one. But the, because it's so long, the bit that's in there is just a small little tab, and that's not very strong. Yeah. There's a lot of, lot of flex there. Not, yeah, not, not a strong uh, thing to hold up the, the weight of the whole blade. And I was actually down um, on the rock, rock, same rocky outcrop on the beach one night in a strong wind, and I was flapping this up and down, doing orbs, and the wind snapped that up, snapped that off. So this is. Uh, I had to recut it and then cut another tab. So this was actually about that. Long. This was coming right. This would cover, go right to the ground and cover my feet. Yeah. My arm was straight. Um, so it's, I kind of have to bend down a little bit now when I do my orbs, which is the same for a lot of my tools, especially these water blasters. When I do, I when I do orbs with these, yeah, they. I put that on the end of the torch. Where is my torch? Yeah. Um, where is it? Sorry, I've got so much stuff here. Let's get rid of that. This is why we love you, dude. <laughs> where did my other torch go? I'm in my hand. Where's my torch? Where's my flashlight? Exactly. Where's my torch? Where's my flashlight? Yeah, I got it. I got it. Where's my torch? Where's my flashlight? So this thing, get that in there. Um, when I put my arm straight, it doesn't just doesn't reach the ground. It's probably you know that far above the ground. So I've got to like kind of bend bend my knees and do my orbs. And I I can I'm really good at keeping keeping my my body my legs straight. Sorry, my legs bent and and not moving up and down. And my orbs still come out kind of perfect height. Yeah. Um. So I'm, I just practice makes perfect. Just do just keep trying it. And a common thing for people in America, uh, but they're really hard to come by for people in England. Apparently, they just can't can't find them anywhere. Um, because oh. probably maybe maybe they don't have a lot of backyard pools in England. Not yeah. sure why. <laughs> um, it's always stormy there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So for the people that have never seen one, this is what it looks like. It's just a water thing. You just suck up water with a plunger. Um, basically, I use the same Dremel Dremel cutting tool to cut out the plunger. You got to cut around here to remove the plunger part, um, and then. I thought when I removed the plunger initially, I thought I'm going to use the plunger as well as a light painting tool. So yeah. that was a solid piece. I had to cut that off as well. And up in here, uh, that was all solid as well. So I had to cut that off as well. So light goes all the way up in there. And basically, I just put that into there. Uh, oh, sorry. And put put a hose clamp around there as well. And that's it. And it light up. Amazing. It. Oh my God. Yes. And Rod, can you tell us what exactly this was before you cut it up? Like, what 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 would people buy? Like, what can I put a link in the in the description? A water, uh, a, what's it called? A water blaster, just a water blaster pool toy. Okay, okay. The, even the green one that you just lit up—that that's a pool toy too. Yeah. Oh, so that's that's the plunger. Oh, that's the plunger inside. Got it. Got it. Got it. Got it. Got it's it. It's exactly cool. the same as the plunger. It's just a different model, but. So you get two light painting tools for one. You just got to hack them apart yeah. and build them. Exactly. Yeah, perfect. Yeah, yeah. And also, uh, I never, haven't actually removed these tips yet. Someone said that they've done it because they're glued on really, really tight. But um, someone said that he heated up and stretched it and removed it, and, and he's able to, to swap all the colored tips across all these um, the tubes. But um, I haven't figured that out yet. So one day I'll... Well, we're excited to see that one. 
one of the DIY things I wanted to show that my dad uh, yeah. actually came up with was this little slider. Um, I do a lot of tube work if you've seen my stuff. And basically it's just a small, like maybe one or two mil uh, foam construction uh, roll. Yeah. I just rolled it up. And basically what you do is you take your light sword or your tube and you just put it over there. Now you've got a dead space where now you're making a ring. And yeah, yeah, yeah. I've seen a lot of people do it uh, more recently, which I'm glad it's catching on. Um, yeah. And so that's, that's kind of the sign of that little foam piece on the handle there. Yeah. Yeah, right. It's nice to make yeah. a little separation because then you get that really cool ribbon effect with like some negative space in there. And it kind of actually, you know, sometimes that's negative right. space can be really cool. That's uh, right. Totally. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's a good idea. Yeah. Um, how many, how many, how many times a day do you dream about the hardware store? Uh, honestly, I don't go there much, but when I do go there, I buy, you know, I've got so many of these adapters, I just buy shitloads of them. <laughs> I've got, yeah. got heaps of these hose clamps, um, you know, the, the hardware is I can get what I need, basically, but I don't go there too often. <laughs> do, they, do they have um, your picture up on the wall? I was going to say. Like, you know, hey? no, 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 I'm not that, not that regular, no. Uh, I was going to say, um, in, in Australia, we can't get the, the fluorescent tube coverings that you guys have in, in at your hardware stores in America. We, yeah. we can't get them in Australia. Wow. You know, the different, the ones, the Eric Paré ones and all those kind of, you know, the yeah. fluorescent tube. Yeah. Yeah. They're really hard to come by here. don't know why. It's just... Well, if I ever make it that way, I'll bring you a couple. I'm not going to love that. So, yeah, thank you. <laughs> That'd be great. For sure. Uh, well, well, and so look at this one real quick. While you're looking for this one, I want to show everyone. This is yeah. literally the same. I just, I, This is just a roll of small, thin plastic. I literally rolled it into a cone, and I taped yeah. it with scotch tape so there wasn't any black on it, so it would be a full cone. But, you know. Light Painting Paradise, other people, they're, they're selling these things for $40. And I literally made it for $0.13. Cents. If you, so hang on, so the, the torch goes in the bigger end, doesn't it? So the torch goes, yeah. So, I mean, look at this. Wow. Yeah, and I can just hold it there. And so this is a yeah, cool technique. Cool. You actually take this and you move it around your body. I just yeah. put one of Chris Bauer levitating in, the, in, a, in a cool field. But you could do this. Yeah, and right. that, got claws coming around uh the person which is actually kind of cool but for 13 uh, well, cents i mean look at this we got lights are 13 cents. I know, I know. Isn't it brilliant? calligraphy you could do spelling you could do you know whatever so that's a good idea we might get, might get the kids to make some of those in school they can do that because they, they want to write write their name and draw stuff and stuff so that's a good idea it, it's super own. easy and you get that point at the end of the cone so you actually have a sharp tip point so if you do yeah, yeah, yeah. and so you can actually use it in kind of a 3d form um or yeah. form so it's yeah definitely try I, wonder if, I wonder if you could twist that and make it like the unicorn plexi blade absolutely maybe absolutely yeah, yeah. Make sure that the 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 closer the proximal end to the torch is open enough to get the torch in right so, but after yeah, that, you're exactly. your oyster you can do whatever shape you want you know yeah yeah, yeah. Uh, also the plastic um baseball uh po sorry ho hockey stick just bought that from a dollar store and just cut the end off. This thing does some cool effects, as, as well as these plastic baseball bats. You know, just cut the ends off and the perfect yeah. diameter to fit to fit all, fit all the um, the adapters. So, yeah, I love it. Cool. I, yeah. I love it, man. I love it. I love it. Even the even the pool noodle. Keep going. What else do you have for us? This is amazing. Just a pool noodle. Just I just thought I saw a pool noodle in the um. In the store and I thought oh, I must just shove a torch in there and that just I've done some orbs with that this is great I've seen just, them you know. they turned out great yeah they yeah, turned out awesome. great. yeah are uh, you gonna like uh, for this video are you gonna get some photos up put some photos up as well as do you want me to send you some photos uh sure yeah do that um I'll put some of my own up that I'm talking about yeah. so people can see uh what yeah. I'm using um yeah. the first set of tubes I was gonna tell you this the first set of tubes I think you can get them there in Australia maybe not or these musical instruments called bushwhackers and they come in different lengths because they're different pitches of the the, the notes of the of the scale um and they're all different colors oh, yeah, yeah yeah and so that was the first uh diy kind of like i'm not going to spend a bunch of money to light paint yeah. when you know granted they're solid colors they're primary colors they're not going to be you know these alien tubes there's not going to be like any holographic stuff which of course i yeah. gravitate towards but to get people into this Bushwhacker said, I think you get six uh, six uh, plastic thick tubes, yeah. 
and it's like twenty five dollars in in U S. And so like you get six two for twenty five bucks. They're ready to go. You stick a torch in there. You might need to find a kind of a DIY cap. Sometimes I just take a you know this black roll of duct tape yeah. serves everyone wonders. Uh, yeah yeah yeah. I just buy the um the chair stoppers, rubber chair stop. Okay cool. That works, then, yeah. Chair, chair leg. And then just and they stay it. on, actually, because yeah, mine sometimes fly right. off. Yeah, right. Yeah, no, it's like all different sizes. So, yeah, hardware store again. That's yeah, pretty good. Um, what else? Amazing, brother. Um, I can't. I love it. A heavy acrylic rod. I just bought a clear, bit clear acrylic, acrylic rod and then put a stopper on the end as well. So, um, that's a quite a heavy tool to, to use there because it's solid. Um, it would be good to get a, 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 a hollow one, which is a yeah, that's, that's exactly why I want those clear tubes that um, you guys have in America. I'd love to have, have them here, but it was really hard to come by. Well, the beautiful yeah. thing about the clear tube and that clear rod is that with Frank's new torch, you can make that that's any right. color you want, and you can actually carry less. I travel a ton. I live out of a van. I'm, I'm literally light painting on the road every night. Um, yeah. So to, to use yeah. more versatile things, like Frank, thank you so much for making this torch. Uh, yeah. You know, it just it really helps me not carry so much, especially exactly. sometimes a kilometer or two into a waterfall, or sometimes there's a there's a serious hike in just to get to the location, and you know you're carrying yeah. things. It's it's not going to work, you know. So yeah. I love. What you what, what's your bag? What, what, what do you use to um, transport tools? Um, I use uh, Eric Perret's uh, tube bag. That gives me because because oh, right. I carry about seven of the tubes. I always uh, if I take two out, I always put two new ones in there. So I'm always rotating yeah. to get my feet, yeah, yeah. my, my yeah. diversity uh, always fresh. Um, I use that. I also use my camera bag for all the small torches. Um, that's about all I need because I I really truly believe that I can create with like you a hockey stick or a pool noodle like you can put anything in my yeah. hand and this is why i want this podcast between you and i is to really show people especially with these examples you don't have to spend a lot of money to be uber creative you just have to think you just uh -huh. have to, you just have to really think and um uh, and i love that dude i love that that's a it's a huge thing um you've super yeah. i got a couple staple questions uh before we we take off here um, obviously, music is super inspiring to the world, uh, to everyone, to all living things. You're a manager of Timbuktu Band. How long? I'm not the manager. No, no, I just got to uh, hold you up there. That, I'm not the manager. I just play percussion in the band. So uh, there's a oh, guy yeah. called Joe Keith. Yeah, my mate Joe. He's uh, the lead. He writes a lot of the songs, and um, it's his, it's his um, it's his baby that band. So, okay. Yeah. So you yeah, play, yeah. How long have you been playing percussion? Do you play the djembe? Like what? What, what do you play? Uh, djem, djem, djem. Congas, bongos, uh, timbales, just, it just all, all, all sorts of hand percussion. So I've been doing that for the last 20 years, just playing in diff different bands and reggae bands. And um, yes. and I, I, when I was living in Brisbane, I was playing in a, a group called the Vinyl Slingers. So I was basically a DJ who played other people's music, and then we played percussion over the top and didgeridoo and had an MC that rapped and stuff. And we were, we were quite popular, but we kind of, I, I live, you know, a oh, two-hour drive from Brisbane now, so we don't, it's, the Vinyl Slingers don't really get together much anymore. So when I moved down here, uh, Joe asked me to, to join this band, and it's to me it's real music. Like we're playing, you know, we've got a, a, a whole huge brass section. We've got saxophone, uh, flute, uh, trumpet. We've got the full band now, eight eight member band, and we're playing real gigs and real music. And it's, it's just it's invigorating for me to do that after such a long time playing clubs where we start at 1 a.m. and the crowd's drunk and everything. And now yeah. I'm playing. I'm still playing the happy, happy crowd, but there's still we're playing market sometimes with there's kids around and families, and it's a more wholesome, wholesome affair down here. I think so. I love it. It's just a love whole new lease on life, and it's great music, and it's, yeah, it's so much fun. Yeah. Okay, two part question, Rod. Uh, give us one song to add to the master list. I've asked every guest, uh, honored guest, to give me one song to put on the master light painting list. Could be anything. Um, and then what do you, the second half of the question is, what do you typically light paint to? Do you actually use music? Do you, is it different every night? Like what, what do you, how does music? No, I, uh, I, I, don't, I, I don't really listen to music much at home. The time I listen when I'm driving around and I've got all my music basically stored. I don't stream anything. I've got it all stored on a, on a, on a SD card on my phone and I just plug the phone into the car. Um, otherwise I don't really listen to music. Um, Sometimes I, sometimes I might get 
in the little speaker play video, but generally I just like peace and quiet. The music kind of distracts me a lot. Yeah. Uh, so it distracts my. Uh, a song. Give me one song to add to the list. There's a list on to a oh, sorry a band, band called Long Le, to a French so French band um, and they've got a song called Chicken Delight for Old Chicken. That's a that's one of my favorite songs. So yeah. Okay, right. it's going on the list, man. It's going on the long, list. Long to a live delight for old chicken. Yeah. Okay, uh, it's on the list. <laughs> it's awesome. It's awesome. I'm gonna rearrange awesome, the list according to like tempo and how I see that I can integrate all these, but that's definitely going on. Okay. There. Thank you. Sweet. All right. Awesome. Thanks, man. <laughs> yeah. Dude. So one final question. Uh, if I, I if I can open up a Hogwarts uh, university for light painters and have you come instruct one course, what would what would what would you come back and teach? Instruct one course, so like just on a, on a certain technique. Yeah, on a technique. Uh, it could be just on building. It could be just on anything. Like what what are the kids signing up for? What are they What are they so happy all summer to go back to Hogwarts this fall to learn? Oh, all right. Okay. okay. Okay, I'll, I'll teach them how to make those mushrooms, those uh, light yes. mushrooms. Awesome. And can you tell us real quick how to do it before we get out of here? Yeah, I don't, I don't have the tool. I've got it's basically the uh, LED lights, uh, street lights around the edge of the bike wheel. It's the same bike wheel you use to make the domes, the light domes. Um, just put that up above your head and just spin around. I've got to check out my YouTube. There's a light painting tutorial exactly that shows you how I do do all the uh, the mushrooms. So yeah, yeah. check that out. It's <laughs> Well, Rod, I can't say thanks enough. Uh, it's been an amazing yeah, thanks, conversation. Man. I'm so glad we got to connect. You've inspired yeah, me and thousands of other people around the world. So thank thanks, you for man. your creativity. Uh, yeah. And I'll talk to you soon. You got full support thanks, from America man. here. Take care, buddy. Thanks, thanks so much, Aaron. Take care, mate. See ya. See ya. Bye.